All right, this is Vegeta8259, and today I'm going to be starting a review of the Master Grade Victory Gundam. And, let me get the box in here. This is a version Kotoki release uh, from December of 2009. And, uh, I have to say, it looked really nice uh, from the promo, promo images. But this kit does have some problems. It's still a nice master grade, but it's definitely got some issues. So, uh, you actually get quite a lot of stuff. Aside from the V Gunnam itself, you get, uh, if you bought the 30th anniversary version, which I think you still can, you get a runner of clear parts. You get two beam sabers. Uh, three sheets of decals, a sheet of clear stickers, a sheet of dry transfers, and a sheet of foil stickers. You get several extra bits for the hands and some alternate color pieces for the vents. You get a hexa core fighter, uh, some action base connectors, beam rifle, uh, an extra V fin, beam shield, um, the fan looking beam server thing, but we'll go over all of that extra stuff when we get to the uh, weapons and accessories part of the review. And in this part, uh, I think we'll just pretty much go over articulation and do some size comparisons. <clears throat> so, first off, for colors, you've got the standard Gundam colors red, white, blue, yellow, and gray. Um, this blue is a little bit lighter than what you normally get in a Gundam kit. And everything else is pretty much the standard colors. And you already see some issues. Oh god, there's another one. Yeah, we'll just get to those as we come to them. Uh, for articulation, the head is actually... I think it's just double jointed. Anyway, there's a ball joint up in the head, which lets it go up and down, side to side, and rotate 360. And then there's this little rocking mechanism, which uh, is really for the transformation, but I guess it just adds a little bit more flexibility to the head. The shoulders uh, can rotate 360, obviously. They're on a ball, well not, not on a peg system, but still there's a little joint in there that lets them go forward and back a little bit. Can't really go up and down on that joint though. But uh, the arms can come out about that far. And the shoulder is on a, well shoulder armor is on a double joint aside from the arm itself, which lets it move independently. There's rotation below the shoulder. I actually kind of like these white pieces of armor over the uh, elbow joint. I didn't think I would, but I actually think I like it. Anyway, uh, the elbows do bend a full 180. And you've got some nice part separation down here at the elbow joint. Which I'm not really sure if that's intentional or just part of the transformation. And his leg came off again. That will probably happen a lot unfortunately. Move these arms out. The side skirts are on ball joints. They can actually go up pretty far and rotate all the way around. And this guy is just trying his best to fall apart. Front skirts are also on ball joints so they can come up and rotate all the way around. Oh, Also there's an extra little joint in there that lets the uh, front skirts come out like so. The back skirts also move. They can go up and down. There's actually kind of a double joint in there. The hips <clears throat> are on ball joints. Uh, very, very weak ball joints that come loose very easily. But the legs can go forward like so. And back up until they hit the back skirts. They can only go out about that far, and I'm just going to pop this leg off to show you the leg articulation. 
see how it's already got kind of an awkward shape at the top of the hip and I think that contributes a lot to why these legs keep popping off anyway uh, he does almost a full 180 bend at the knee despite having this little uh, vent here on the back of the knee it just tucks down inside the lower leg and you can get just about a full 180 and when you do that this little piece of knee armor kind of dislodges and comes out a little bit uh, there's a little flat back here which exposes the thruster and this little fin but I think that's really more for the transformation and armor pieces falling off still <clears throat> Anyway, for the ankles, there's actually, uh, for the transformation again, there's an ankle joint that lets it come up pretty far. There's actually a little slider joint in there. So it can bend that far forward. Uh, it can bend down a little bit. And then the foot actually has a joint in it which lets it bend down all the way. And the ankle armor is on a ball joint so it can go up and down and rotate and wiggle around as well. Um, in case you were thinking I forgot about waist articulation, uh, there is no waist articulation. There's no rotation at the waist whatsoever. No forward and back movement at all. That's all because of the core fighter transformation that this guy has, which we'll go over in another part. There are also some thrusters on the back which can move around. The back skirt has little thruster you can open that flap up and expose thrusters in there and these thrusters on the backpack can move up and down so uh oh I almost forgot the hands uh, the wrists are on ball joints so they can wiggle and rotate and V Gundam has got not really new master grade hands because they've done this before but uh, what they did is that the ball joint, ball joint, the thumb is on a ball joint, but the other three fingers are connected just with a peg system. And let me find the right fingers that connect to this hand. Here we go. There's one. There's another one. And where's the trigger finger? I know it's in here somewhere. There it is. All right, so basically, you've got four sets of fingers for each hand. You've got the closed fist fingers, which you see here. You've got a set of fingers for gripping the beam saber. You've got a set of fingers with a trigger finger for the uh, beam rifle. And then you've just got a set of open fingers. And they're actually pretty easy to switch out. All you have to do is pull these off and snap in the new ones. And there you go. They've done this on other kits before. The Master Grade Goof and Goof Custom also have this. Although those two kits didn't have uh, posable thumbs. They just had the removable finger aspect of it. But uh, I actually kind of like this. It didn't. I wasn't too crazy about it at first when they announced it, but I think it was a good idea for this kit being so small because I would really hate to have to mess with posable fingers on a kit this size because this is a pretty small Master Grade. In fact, that would be a good way to lead into the size comparison part of the video. Here is the RX-78 Master Grade of the same scale. So as you can see, <clears throat> RX-78 is quite a bit taller than V-Gundam. RX-78 being an 18 meter suit and V-Gundam being only 15. So, uh, yeah. He's he's almost 1 to 144 scale size. So, a very, very tiny uh, mobile suit. But, uh, I guess that about does it. Actually, let me do the cockpit first. I always forget the cockpit. Like, see, he just comes apart when you're barely even messing with him. Anyway, this thing 
slides out and it's not wanting to cooperate. Yeah. Hold on. I'll get this in a second. Okay, maybe not. I'll just do the cockpit part when we get to the transformation. Anyway, uh, here's half of V Gundam, and make sure to come part f back for part two, and we'll go over the weapons and accessories.